is how to use the area formulas for using the trapezoid and also the midpoint rules when we're trying to approximate integrals. And this is the integral that we're trying to approximate, the integral from 0 to 1 cosine of x squared dx. And in this case, we're trying to use n is equal to 8. And as you can see, I put down the formulas on the board right here. This is the error formula for using the trapezoid rule, right? And this right here is the error formula for using the midpoint rule. As we can see, both of these formulas looks similar, right? The only difference is that this right here is 12, and this right here is 24, and the rest are the same. And both of them have the a, b, k, and n values. So let me explain what do this letter represent first. So the easy ones are a and b. Well, these are just the limit of integration. In our case here, a is a starting value, which is 0, and b is the ending value, which is 1. So let me just indicate that right here for you guys. A is 0, and b is 1. All right. So that takes care of that. And the n, it depends on the question. It depends on the direction. n is whatever we said right here. We are going to use 8 in this case. Okay. And now, the hardest part is the k value. And once again, both of them, they do have that k. So what is k? Well, let's take a note right here. k is a number so that the absolute value of the second derivative of the function is less than or equal to k for all the values of x in between of a and b, including a and including b. Well, what does this mean? As you can see, if you look at this kind of like backwards, k is always going to be bigger than or equal to the absolute value of the second derivative, isn't it? In another word, k is nothing but just a maximum of the absolute value of the second derivative. And sometimes some people may just treat k as an upper bound as well. But in this case, let me show you guys how to find the maximum of the absolute value of the second derivative. All right? So here is our function that we're trying to integrate. We have cosine of x squared. So let me put it down right here. Of course, we are talking about the second derivative inside. We have to differentiate this twice so we can get the second derivative, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do the work. To get the first derivative right here, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the input stays the same, the x squared. But we have to remember to do the chain rule. Chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is this 2x. And this right here is the first derivative. And now, to get to a second derivative, right here, it is actually a product of two functions. And let me look at this as negative 2x and then times sine of x squared. This is the first function, and that's the second function. And the product rule says, I'm going to keep the first function right here, which we have the negative 2x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the second. OK, derivative of sine is positive cosine. And the input stays the same. But once again, chain rule says we have to look at the inside and multiply by its derivative. Derivative of x squared is this 2x. And now, part of the rule says we are going to add the second function, which is sine of x squared. And we multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of negative 2x is just a negative 2. So this is what we have. And as you can see, I'm just going to clean things up a little bit. For example, negative 2x times this 2x is altogether negative 4x squared. And of course, we still have the cosine of x squared. And then let me just put down the negative 2 times that, which is neg minus 2 sine of x squared, like that. Therefore, this is our second derivative. And the way that I'm going to show you guys on how to get the maximum of the absolute value of the second derivative is just to do it on the graphing calculator, all right? Uh, the typical way is if you want to get the maximum, you have to differentiate this again and then look for uh, setting equal to 0 and look for the critical values, right? But most likely, you will have to use a calculator anyways. So let me just use a graphing calculator to show you guys how to do it. So let me show you guys what do I have on the board first, and then we'll go to a graphing calculator for you guys. First of all, this graph right here represents the absolute value of the second derivative. Once again, we have the absolute value, and then we put a second derivative right here in the absolute value, and then we graph it right here. And the window I want to focus is from 0 to 1 for the x values, and this is pretty much the end point, all right? And I'm going to just look for 0 to an y value. I'm not sure what it is yet, but I'll show you. And with that being said, let me go to my graphing calculator right here. So 
this is how you do it. I'm just going to go to grab, which we have the absolute value. You go to second and catalog, and then you get the absolute value. And then you are just going to start into punching all this uh, equation right here, right? Negative four, and we have the x squared, and then cosine of x squared, like this, and then close parentheses, and then minus two sine x square like that oops okay and i'm just going to go to window and usually what you want to do is maybe your, your window is not in the standard form you should go to zoom and then uh go to zoom standard first and you will see what kind of graph that you will end up with it takes a while maybe So this is kind of taking too long, so let me just kind of break it. By doing so, you can just hit on if you don't want to wait. But it's making progress, right? So let me just kind of show you guys. This is how the whole graph will look like. And for the zoom standard means just you have 10, negative 10, 10, negative 10, right? That's all. But I don't care about the you know, big values. I just want to go to window, and I'm going to change it. So for the x minimum, let me just change it to 0. And for the x maximum, I want to focus on 1. So 0 to 1. And that's what I said. All right. And for the y value, y minimum, let me just set it to be zero. Okay. Let me just put down to be zero. And for the y maximum, uh, let me try with five. And it's going to be like this. And as you can see, this is the graph that I have on the board for you guys. And clearly, you can see that the maximum happens right there. But I cannot just like look at it from my eyes, right? So this is how you do it. You go to second, calc, and then you go to maximum. And right here, it's going to ask you for the left bound. So you press 0. So that's the starting x value. And for the right bound, you press 1. And important, right here, you're going to guess. You are going to let the calculator guess, all right? So what you're going to do is move the cursor probably right here a little bit to the, the maximum, like that. And be sure you hit enter once again, all right? This right here is just a guess value that you have on the cursor. That's not correct. You have to press enter again. And it will show you the maximum happens at this x value and that y value, all right? And that's why I have on the board for you guys. On the calculator, it shows you that x is equal to 0 0.9941, and the y value is 3.8449. And depending on how many decimal places that you want, and let me just put down four decimal places right here. Okay, so this right here, it's actually the k value, all right? The k represents um, the maximum value of the absolute value of the second derivative, and the graph y is equal to the absolute value of the second derivative. So this y value is actually what we're going to use for the k. And now everything's ready because I can just put this k right here, right? And then I set up the b is 1 and a is equal to 0. And this is all over. We have the 12 is right here. And the m value is 8. So we put that right here and then square. And now you can just punch in everything onto your calculator. And this is what you should get, 0 0.005006. I know this is not the answer in the back of the book, but please use this one right here because this is how you should really get the k value. And I'll show you guys how did they end up with that k value that they use so that you actually end up with a different uh, answer. But seriously, if you do this, I'll be so happy. On the other hand, we have the error formula for the midpoint one, right? Everything's pretty much the same except for the 24 right here. And once again, set it up, punching everything on the calculator, and you end up 0 0.002503. And we are done. And one more time, this and that are not the answer in the back of the book because they use the different k value. Okay? But if you do it this way, it's actually more accurate. And do it this way on the exams. And now, real quick, let me just show you guys how exactly they get the k value, right? So the book's weight right here. Still, we are talking about the absolute value of the second derivative has to be less than or equal to k. 
Okay, so let's look at this right here for the second derivative and put that in the absolute value. So right here, the absolute value of the second derivative, and this is equal to absolute value, second derivative is that, negative 4x squared cosine of x squared minus 2 sine of x squared. And now, this is the property of the absolute value, and this is also known as the triangular inequality, and this is the idea. So we have the absolute value, and we have two parts inside. And what we can do is, we know by the triangle inequality, this is, equal, this is less than or equal to. We are going to look at the first term, and then give that to be an um, absolute value. So this right here is going to be the absolute value of that, which is negative 4x squared cosine of x squared. All right? And then we close this absolute value. And instead of minus, I'm just going to say that's add. Because once again, of, when you're adding, it's of course bigger than subtracting. And what we're going to do for the second part is just look at this and then put it into another absolute value. So we add the absolute value of this term, which is 2 sine of x squared. All right? And remember, all the x values that we're looking for is just from 0 to 1. So as you can see, this is the part. Right, we have the x squared here. Well, from 0 to 1, this will be the biggest when x is equal to 1, right? So let me just indicate that right here for this term, for the x squared. Let me just tell you guys that this is biggest when x is equal to 1, right? And when you plug in 1 into here, you get 1 squared, it's just 1, times negative 4 is just negative 4. And you see that this right here, cosine of x squared. Well, I don't know. I don't know um, what value this is going to be, but I do know. Cosine of whatever, this right here, the biggest that it can ever be for cosine is just 1, isn't it? That's the range for cosine. So I will indicate this right here, the whole thing, right? So the biggest that cosine can be, this is biggest. Uh, that it can be is 1, right? Because this can be is 1. And likewise, on the second term here, we have 2 is just 2, and then we have sine of whatever. But for sine, cosine, the range are just from negative 1 to 1, and the biggest value for this term is also just equal to 1. So what we are trying to do is, okay, we know this is going to be less than or equal to, and now we have the absolute value. This is at most 1. This is also at most 1 on this interval from 0 to 1 for the uh, a and b, right? So altogether, we just have 1 times 1, and then times negative 4, so we have absolute value of negative 4. And then we add it with the second one, which is absolute value of positive 2, right? Because this is, once again, the biggest, and we're talking about uh, plugging 1 get this. At the end, this is absolute value of negative 4, which is 4, plus 2. This is just going to be less than or equal to 6. And this is how they get the k value in the back of the book. That's how they come up with the k value. But let me tell you, this is way more accurate because you do have the maximum right, second derivative. And this is, once again, much better. Anyways, this is it. On the exam, do it this way to find the k value.